Hi everyone, I want to talk a little bit about some frequently asked questions for the monk in season 24. So I have been playing and streaming for around 46 hours now. So this is uh, Sunday night right now and I have hundreds of thousands of people coming in with a lot of questions. So I think this will cover quite a lot of this. So first things first, which build do you want to play? I get a lot of questions about LED with light versus inner, like what do you want to do? And the answer is that Inner is typically the better starter, the better, like easier to play, easier to get into build, and it will allow you to just get rolling quite quickly. If you have Inners with coolest boots and bindings, you can just jump straight into T16, like even GR90, GR100, and eventually 110, 115 speedruns, and you're not gonna have any issue whatsoever. With Red Light, there is uh, quite some issues because you need to have decent gear, you need to be ancient in the best case, you need to have the DGEM level and all that stuff. So you definitely don't want to start with that. On the leaderboards right now you're going to see a lot of high inner clears and that comes mainly from the fact that it's such a good starter and also that it's probably more hype than the LD Wave of Light which is a basically old build versus the inner side is like super fun and super common and everyone is playing it. So don't get confused about this, LD Wave of Light is going to win and it's gonna be the stronger build in the end, but not by a really big margin. It's quite small, so it's gonna be a few tiers ahead, like really end game push when everything is optimized, but Inners is just easier to do, easier to play, and also just works more consistently because it's not really an area damage focused build of like, you know, fishing for huge pulls like Wave of Light. Wave of Light, you try to go for in insane big maps uh, like you do on most other builds, and uh, obviously you benefit more from uh, first of all, higher Paragon, higher, better gear, basically, and also a better map, which all of which is not present right now for everyone in the game. In terms of group matters, you can play Inners quite well all the way up to GR120, and afterwards is essentially where Wave of Light kind of needs to start or where it's like located the best. So it is a bit ahead, a bit better for like especially combining it with Firebird Wizard, which is the combo that I've been playing with my team, Firebird plus with Light. And it is definitely the case that Firebirds is much stronger than the, the Wave of Light. So again, Firebirds is the same thing as Inner, just in better, so to say. So it has a, a small AoE, really high DPS kind of playstyle, not benefiting from air damage, super consistent, quite tanky and uh, the wave of light again is mostly there just to kill the trash and all the small enemies so the advantage here is that instead of the second wizard that also has mirror images you go with the wave of light to try to get a bit extra progression that comes from a bit of like trash enemies that you kill around the pool you're not actually contributing the same amount of dps that a firebird does so i wanted to clear these things up now let's get into some more details for inners and then for wave of light for Inners, the best ethereal powers are Echoing Fury, Ingeom, Furnace, Messerschmitt, and Flying Dragon. You can't have five weapons, so you have to choose, and usually you combine the cooldown heavy stuff for Torment 16 farming, for example I run Messerschmitt plus Ingeom there, and you combine the like really high DPS like Flying Dragon, for example, and the Furnace uh, for pushing. So that depends a bit on what you're doing and what the exact setup is. Echoing Fury is especially good when you're speed farming as well because of this on-kill mechanic. In pushing it really doesn't do that much, so this is also where Flying Dragon shines in comparison. When it comes to cooldown values, there are also specific scenarios where you need a lot of cooldown and also cases where you basically don't need any cooldown whatsoever or almost nothing. So mostly you need a lot of cooldown when you play water allies in speed content like T16 or bounties or something like this. You want to just blast through, you want to get as many dashes as possible because your water allies destroy everything and you don't really care about anything else. Also, you want to have a lot of cooldown when you play fire ally speeds. So in speedruns especially, you also stack in Geom and Messerschmitt and try to get these on-kill effects rolling to explode as much as possible, essentially every few seconds or so, to just keep annihilating everything around you. Fire is the stronger setup once it is optimized, but it's not good, as good enough if you don't optimize it. So you need to stack full cooldown, go all the cooldown items, and then you're gonna destroy. For fire pushing, you usually have 
convention of elements. And for in that case, you don't really need any cooldown whatsoever. The same goes for most of the time, like higher speed runs or even pushing with water. Those setups don't really need a lot of cooldown because you just don't have to press your button so often. Attack speed, however, is always a good stat. So especially when you're not stacking a lot of cooldown, attack speed is the way to go because it scales the damage of your mystic ally abilities and their attacks. The attacks don't really matter, which is also the reason why Tasker and Theo is really bad. A Tasker and Theo just increases their base attack speed and it doesn't give anything to the active abilities, so it's useless. Another thing that's useless is area damage. So how area damage works is that it is applied to the two allies that you get from your skill on your bar and the Kudos boots, because that one copies your uh, one mystic ally that you get by default. Those two guys have area damage, but the other eight guys that you summon from your inner set and that disappear again do not benefit from area damage. So this is apparently the case for all runes and makes it so that area damage is not a worthwhile stat to get. You can maybe roll it on the shoulder, but it's a very minor increase. You can keep it in paragons, but if there's any case of you starting to lag or something like this, especially in groups, you can easily remove it and it will barely do anything. And lastly for Inners, there's a lot of people that have problems with their uh, water allies not transforming and staying in water form. This has the uh, reason that they time out and they have a 15 second lifespan and they just disappear after those 15 seconds. So you have to attack and spawn new ones. And if you have pressed Mystic Ally before this, they will not be transformed. So what you have to do is not spam Mystic Ally button and instead you wait until you see some of those guys not transformed. There is also a bug or some kind of behavior that makes them transform back, back sometimes. So be aware of this and keep an eye out on your Mystic Allies. Now let's get to LOD. First of all, the ethereals that you need to combine are Kiro Shiro's Blade, Incense Torch of the Grand Temple and the Rabbit Strike. You need to have exactly those three weapons in any combination and then you're good. You can drop Kiyoshiro's Blade for Ingeum if you want to do like lower end speed content, but it's definitely a big loss in damage. So this is only something when you really prefer to go fast for some reason. The main complaint that I get from people is low survivability and they ask me how to survive. So this is actually an issue and a valid concern. So LOD with Light is not really that tanky by default. It is kind of tanky in solo push when you have stone gauntlets and unity and all that stuff. But in typical, especially form and speedruns, you don't have this and you just protect yourself with uh, a bit of shielding from St. Archie's gloves and then Serenity. Serenity is really the key to protect yourself, uh, use it well and time it well when you go into the pool. You have to go in inside like every five seconds because of the Cyclone Strikes effect from the shoulders and the braces. So you need to activate it and then you can dash out, you can attack from somewhere in the corner and your clone will be hitting stuff. So as long as you attack, you are good because your clone will be there to deal all the damage and your own attacks don't really matter much. You can just stay in safety and then look at what's around you and then press serenity at the right time. So you don't need to stay in the middle. There's no point in doing that besides trying to refresh your resources when you have the Shadow Killer Ethereal or the J-Tail Ethereal because they have spirit on crit. So this is something you want to use to refill your spirit. And if you use those two items, you can actually refill your spirit quite well, especially with large density and with high crit chance. So if you use one of those two, it allows you to actually drop Mystic Ally from your bar. It's, this, it's an unnecessary skill that is only there to refresh your resources. Myself, at least in group speedruns, I don't run Mystic Allies at all, and instead I have Mantra to give myself extra shields with Mantra of Healing. And then I use the Serenity plus the Mantra to keep up my Squirt Snugglers even most of the time and I'm not really dying too often. It can still happen, especially when you go and have to skip a lot and get left behind by the party a little bit or something like this. Your epiphany might run out, you might run out of dashes, there's gonna be some elites casting something at you or something like this. But most of the time you're gonna be okay, especially when you are protected by your teammates as well. In solo, you should be kind of tanky by default and it should be all right when you just have Unity and St. Archer's Gloss, for example. So uh, this will usually be fine as long as you go on a pace where you destroy stuff quite easily. I also get a lot of questions about my jewelry choice. So in Foreman, I run uh, no SOJ and instead I have Convention plus Obsidian Ring equipped and I have Squirt plus Flavor. So this is my jewelry option. I also hear of some people doing low damage sometimes or no damage at all. 
So these are two different topics. First of all, low damage. This means that you're probably running with a Firebird wizard just like I am. And the explanation is that the Firebird is a much stronger build. It does very high concentrated, basically very small AOE damage. It doesn't benefit from area damage. It is balanced in a completely different way than the Wave of Light. Also, it really comes down your, to your squirts uptime. Squirts is imp incredibly important to kind of get a chance to keep up with the wizard's damage. So if you're running with other metas like um, Wave of Light plus Inner Monk or something, you're not really going to see such a gap, but Firebirds especially is very strong. So when you run this meta, you will mostly be occupied with the trash monsters and the wizard is completely soloing all the elites. So this is something to be aware about. Your job is not to kill the elites. The second part is that sometimes you deal no damage at all because either you didn't cyclone strike the pool well, so you need to make sure that you either epiphany teleport into the pool with a cyclone strike itself or that you dash in in the right position and then cyclone strike there and then get to safety. And also your rabbit strike clone might be stuck somewhere. So you have to keep an eye out for this guy. He's not always visible, but you can see the dot on the mini map. There's a little purple dot that you can watch, especially in groups you don't have a follower or anything else that's kind of like bothering you. So you can look at the minimap to see where it is. And especially when you Cyclone Strike Epiphany teleport a lot around, the clone will appear and cast a Cyclone Strike and then just chill there for a few seconds. And this, if you keep going and keep moving like this, it will not catch up to you. It's similar to Simulacrums that just stay in place and do their thing and then wait for something to happen. So in this case, you have to not attack for a second or two to make sure that this guy can catch up or else he's going to be in the other room and just hitting something on his own and doing no damage whatsoever. At some point, you can just muscle memory this. I don't really look at my minimap at all anymore. I just do this by gut feeling and it's like 98% right. So this is something that you can definitely learn and it's not really too cumbersome once you figure it out. But this is, this is what you have to need to know to understand how to fix this problem. Lastly, a question about when to switch to LOD or how many non-ancients or which non-ancients to use. So in general, you should have at least a bunch of ancients. I would say six plus is kind of the minimum to start with a wave of light. And I mean, some of those items are easy to get. You have your viral most likely is already one and then like a few easy armor pieces and you can just kind of go from there. What is important is that you have the big multipliers, especially the boots and the braces with a high roll on the affix. So it is uh, not really easy to get those in an ancient version. If you do and they're kind of close to the maximum, that's fine. But those are really the items where you can lose a lot of damage when you don't have a good roll. So maybe those you should keep as a non-ancient at least until it's kind of close to maximum on an ancient version and then you switch. And lastly, mystic ally damage on your chest and your shoulder pieces. This only works for inner, not for weapon light. And that's also about it for this video. So I hope I could clear up a lot of stuff for this and it'll help you on your own journey. Uh, for me, so far we are at 1860 Paragon in um, around 45 hours of gameplay. So I am quite satisfied with the progression so far. I'm quite uh, excited to see where this will go. And I'm slowly preparing and piecing together my solo push setup that I'm aiming for a 150 width. So it's going to be quite exciting. Hope you also have a blast in Season 24. Hope you like this video and I'll see you guys next time.